every year in the united states an estimated four point seven million dog bites occur in an effort to combat this issue some states have turned to a radical new form of policy known as breed specific legislation breed specific legislation is the term for any law that prohibits or restricts your right to own certain breeds of dogs these laws can range anywhere from the complete banning of a breed to specific restrictions for certain breeds, such as mandatory spaying and neutering, mandatory muzzling, liability insurance requirements, and special licensing requirements. Although breed-specific legislation most often targets the American Staffordshire Terrier, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and American Bull Terrier, the three breeds commonly referred to as pit bulls, Many other breeds have fallen under attack. Dogs such as Chihuahuas, Doberman Pinschers, Chow Chows, German Shepherds, Mastiffs, Rottweilers, and American Bulldogs have all fallen victim to BSL. Many people believe that eradicating so-called dangerous dogs from communities is the best way to decrease the number of bites and attacks. But is breed-specific legislation really an effective solution? The answer is no. Breed-specific legislation simply doesn't work, and that is because this type of policy is inherently flawed. It relies on the claim that breed is the largest factor in determining a dog's likelihood to bite, but there is no actual evidence to support a correlation between breed and aggression. After conducting a study on dog attacks resulting in human fatalities, the CDC made the following statement. The study does not identify specific breeds that are most likely to bite or kill and thus is not appropriate for policy making decisions related to this topic. So lawmakers in states such as New Mexico, Arkansas, Colorado, and Washington are implementing discriminatory legislation that even the CDC, a federal institution whose primary concern is public health, does not support. Another flaw in breed-specific legislation is that it's extremely difficult to enforce. To illustrate this point, let's play a quick game. Only one of the dogs pictured below is actually a pit bull. Can you guess which one? The correct answer is number 5. As you can probably see, correctly identifying a dog's breed can be difficult, which is why BSL is so hard to enforce. The only way to prevent misidentification of dogs is through costly DNA testing. There is also no evidence to demonstrate that BSL has been effective in its goal of reducing the incident of dog bites. Case studies by the National Canine Research Council in Denver and Miami two cities with current breed bans, showed that citizens still suffered a higher rate of dog bite related injuries after the bans than citizens in nearby breed neutral cities. Breed specific legislation not only fails in accomplishing its intended purpose, it also comes with many negative consequences. To begin, breed specific legislation often causes focus to be shifted away from enforcing active animal control laws such as leash laws, animal fighting laws, and anti-tethering laws that are actually proven to increase public safety. Breed-specific legislation also causes hardship to responsible owners who have friendly, properly supervised, and well-socialized dogs who just happen to fall within a regulated breed. Innocent dogs who pose absolutely no threat are often put to sleep in compliance with BSL. In addition, if you outlaw a breed, then criminals and people of a generally bad nature are more likely to be attracted to that breed. Unfortunately, some people take advantage of and exploit the outlaw status that breed-specific legislation produces. Finally, breed-specific legislation imparts a false sense of security. People living in cities with active breed-specific legislation may feel as though their community is safer and that their chances of being bitten have decreased, when in fact, this is not true. So what can be done? You can join the fight to ban breed-specific legislation in every state. The American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has a page on their website called the Advocacy Center that gives you information on how to get involved. 
You can also be an advocate for breed neutral laws and for providing better resources to enforce existing animal control laws. And, as always, you can be a responsible pet owner and encourage others to do the same. Make sure to spare and neuter your animals and provide them with the proper care, training, and socialization they need to be outstanding pets.